Thank the gentleman for yielding back and now recognize Mr. Bill Rockets for his five minutes of questioning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in November, I had the opportunity to lead a delegation visit to the Arizona-Mexico border, having in-depth conversations. And I also brought some of my local uh, sheriffs with me as well, but having in-depth conversations with the Border Patrol agents, custom agents, and again, local sheriffs, and also Mr. Judd. Uh, the resounding feedback I received was that our border is not secure which continues to allow the surge of illegal drugs that have made every state a border state. Florida, like every other state, has seen stark upticks in, uh, in fentanyl poisoning deaths. Without question, without question, fentanyl is a weapon of mass destruction. We are at war, ladies and gentlemen. Sheriff Martinez, uh, when I visited the Arizona-Mexico border, I met with Sheriff Daniels, uh, who described the United States southern border as a war zone governed by the Mexican cartels. You have provided similar testimony, sir, today. He also said that the large policy shifts from the Trump administration to the Biden administration have emboldened these cartels and elaborated that these new policies have left those at the border out to dry. And I've heard this from... Uh, from residents here in Texas. Do you feel this is a fair assessment, sir? Yes, sir, it is. In your opinion, was the, uh, the Remain in Mexico policy implemented under President Trump helpful? Yes, sir, it was. That's the wall. M Mr. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Judd, it, again, it's wonderful to see you again. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. I greatly appreciate the role you played in helping coordinate the visit in November. The time you spent with the group was informative and your frankness continues to be refreshing. I'd like to ask you similar questions as I did uh, Sheriff Martinez. Do you agree with Sheriff Daniels' assessment that the southern border is a war zone? I, I would agree that the, that the southern border is controlled by criminal cartels and large swaths they have complete control over. Okay. Do you believe construction of the southern wall should be continued and completed. So. I know it should. All you have to do is look at history. In one of the stations that I was assigned to, pre-wall, um, we were apprehending 100,000 people. Post-wall, that, that dropped down to less than 10,000 people. We're able to dictate where illegal um, activity is taking place if we have infrastructure like physical barriers. Well, thank you very much. What other resources and technology do you and the 16,000 Border Patrol field agents need to protect our border from the influx of illicit fentanyl. Now, I, I know that you said we've got to change the policies, but uh, can you elaborate on the resources that are needed once we change the policy, sir? So we must retain Border Patrol agents. We can't do that right now. We're supposed to be at 21,370 agents, yet we're at 19,300. That is the resources that we have to be able to keep. If we don't have enough agents in the field, we can't do the job. Um, CBP, they do an incredibly important job. The ports of entry are incredibly important, but they don't have an issue of retaining employees at the, at the ports of entry. We have an issue with retaining employees between the ports of entry, and we must be able to retain our employees, and we can't do that right now. Thank you, sir. Ultimately, this is a public health crisis. I agree with that. Uh, Mr. Archer, thanks for being here today to provide perspective of health care for or the workforce trying to address the collision of illicit fentanyl and the mental health and substance use disorder concerns we face as a nation. How have the policies of the Biden administration negatively impacted your facilities, your staff, and ultimately patient care? You know, I, I think as a, as a behavioral health provider today, uh, post-COVID, we are in an environment where, um, you know, certain things have been extended during COVID, such as telemedicine flexibility. You know, things that we're hoping are going to be made permanent uh, in, the, in the near future. Um, workforce continues to be one of our major concerns. I know I've shared that numerous times with us tonight. It's what we wake up with day in, day night uh, in this industry. And again, I'll just say, you know, that behavioral health patients in the, in the caregivers that I represent have not always had the strongest advocates. And so as we look at the power that managed care has and other organizations have, parity remains one of our major desires and needs for our industry. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I appreciate it, and I yield back. 
Thank you, gentlemen, for yielding back. Now recognize our longest-serving pharmacist in the United States House. <laughs>